You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler and my guest today is Linda Austin, the CEO of Millhaven Lodge. And Linda's talking to us from Melbourne in Australia. Linda, welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thanks, Wayne. Nice of you to invite me. That's our pleasure. Now, Linda, many of our listeners who are particularly those outside of uh, Victoria may not have heard of Millhaven Lodge. Can you fill us in and, and give us a bit of background about what it is and what you do? Yeah, well, we're, we're a standalone, not-for-profit aged care facility, residential, and we also have some independent living units attached to us. And we were originally a hospital back in the 1920s and um, a bush nursing hospital, and then we went into aged care, which is our core business now. So we've been doing that for about 40 years. Well, it's um, it's certainly a business that's growing with the way the population is shaped in Australia at present. Yeah, it certainly is. Now, how, how big a facility are you? Um, well, we've got 104 beds and uh, just eight uh, independent units at this point in time that are attached to us, which are like mini feeders, if you like. Uh, we look after those people, but we don't actually help them on a day-to-day basis. Uh, but the people in... We, we have high care, low care and dementia care, and um, we also offer respite beds, and we've just started offering private respite uh, you know, for a fee just on emergency for people, which is something new that we do. Now, tell me a little bit about the facility. You say it's a, uh, an ex-hospital from the 1940s, was it? 1920, 1928. Um, they first started opening the organisation, but the building's not. The building was built in, uh, then rebuilt in the 70s, and we've just finished massive renovations and made it look beautiful. So I had visions of high ceilings and cast iron balcony railings and things from the 1920s. Oh, <laughs> that'd be nice. We were in a little house. When it was the original hospital, it was just a little house and it had uh, six patients in it. And um, that we used to then then they started adding you know a maternity ward and that sort of thing and then they started moving one ward into being um, aged care and then they rebuilt the whole thing on a different site. So. Now, many of our uh, audience, Linda, in fact about ninety five percent of them are clinicians of one kind or another, doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, um, mainly either in acute care in hospitals or in aged care. So. What's the message you'd like them to take away today, particularly, uh, I guess, the aged the age care people already know about you, but for those in acute care, what would you like them to hear? Um, what well, I suppose one of the biggest problems we've got is all the, the red tape that we've got that, that obviously comes from the government trying to improve things, but uh, we're finding with the new systems that we've got, we're getting people keen to place people from the acute sector and what they're doing is they're telling people to go out and look at five or six different places and put their name down before they're really ready to and so I'm having to tell them to go away and have their assessments done and come back and put your name on our list only if you want to um, come into our facility and, and, the, and the need is, you know, if you're ready to come because otherwise little old ladies in retirement villages will put their names down for, for three years hence when they might need it and so... When I'm checking my waiting lists, I'm going through, um, you know, sometimes hundreds of people to try and just find the people that are really ready to come right now. That's an interesting um, perspective. I hadn't considered that. Well, we we sort of mostly work with a lot of hospitals. We've got a good relationship with hospitals, and they understand our system, the ones we work with now directly. But when I work with other hospitals, they don't realise the importance of having an assessment done. So, I, firstly, so I know where to place people because. Um, you know we've got distinct high and low and dementia care areas and according to their clinical need and the other thing is the system the government brought in a system of user pays where they um, they say oh you know you can buy your room sort of thing for a certain price and you, you'll never have to move but in actual fact from a clinical point of view that doesn't work because people's needs change so so we sort of negotiate with people but we we do like people to know that um you know, sort of don't don't assume that you'll you'll be in the same room forever. You know, we'll do the best yeah. best for you, but you know, your needs might change. It is a, a difficult category of healthcare to provide, and as you say, people's needs change and things alter. And trying to then get the minister of layer over the top of that from the government's point of view, I understand their difficulties as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can imagine there's lots of difficulties that people look. But you know, I've been in the industry nearly 
40 years myself and um, you know I'm sort of one of the next crop of people coming in and I know how demanding um, us baby boomers can be. Yeah well I'm in the same category and, I, <laughs> and, and, and we baby boomers are used to getting our own way so I do have great sympathy for anyone who has to care for us in our 80s. Yeah. Um, Linda, my favourite question in every interview is about misconceptions. What's the biggest misconception around, you know, your your clients, patients, funding bodies, the biggest misconception that drives you nuts? Um, that we're going to fix people. Right. And I think simply um, families have this idea that, you know, that when they come in into us that we're going to fix them. Mm. I mean, some people realise that it's, you know, it's really... Not always a downhill spiral. Sometimes we can we can fix people, and we've had a few cases where people have improved and and you know sort of managed to go back in the community. But that's rare. We can't always stop people from falling. We can sort of be around and help them, but we can't fix people, and the doctors can't fix people. We can just make their life as pleasant as possible. That's a very insightful comment on the aged care sector, actually, isn't it? Linda, how can people get in touch? Is the website the best way for people to find out more information and get in touch? Yeah, our website. I'm we're sort of a bit of a one-man band. I do the Facebook and the and the website, <laughs> and I manage all that sort of thing myself because I don't have a head office to go to. But um, if anybody's you know in in the Victorian, in the southeastern area, Pakenham, I think most people know us now. We've been here long enough. Just just our website or or, or directly. And that's www.millhavenlodge.org.au? That's it. Now, I always get into trouble for saying domain names too quickly and, and people send me notes going, oh, what was that domain name? So, fair warning, pencil's ready. It's Millhaven Lodge, M-I-L-L-H-A-V-E-N-L-O-D-G-E, Millhaven Lodge, all one word, .org.au. Linda Austin, CEO of Millhaven Lodge, thank you for your time today. It's been a pleasure having you on air with us. Okay, thank you for that. Thanks for being prompt as well. If you've just joined us today, um, you've just missed my conversation with Linda, but the good news is we have a transcript on our website or you can listen to an audio archive of the whole interview on YouTube or SoundCloud and you can find links to all those resources on our website at www.hpr.fm. My name is Wayne Buckler and you're listening to Health Professional Radio.